The hive cluster is under attack. Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Red War Remastered! Today, it's going to be an amazing best of nine! Featuring Rain and Larva. Sent to me by RJB, but you probably already guessed that. He is amazing. He sends me great replays. He has his own YouTube channel at youtube.com slash at RJB underscore TV. And it's a PVZ best of nine. I've been waiting to cast this for a while now, and today is the day. So, game number one, here on Medusa, we got ourselves a Protoss player. He is red, it is Rain, an excellent elite Protoss player. And on the bottom side, it is Larva, who, oh, Larva, he's had a lot of great games on this channel recently, hasn't he? He's good at ZVT, he's great at ZVZ, and ZVP as well, which, you know, if you're not good at a matchup, one of the three, can you really be good at StarCraft? <laughs> Alrighty then. So I think Rain has his hands full here today, but again, Protoss has Storm, they've got Reavers, they have a lot of splash damage to counter the millions of apparently free units that Zerg has. Ah. Uh, should be good. Should be a good time here today. Terra the Overlord moving out. What up, Terry? We got Terra the Overlord shirts and mugs at falconpaladin.store. As well as, you know, just a little bit of uh, some Falcon Paladin logo stickers for your laptop or maybe to slap on an overpass somewhere. Falconpaladin.store. A good place for merch. So we're hatch firsting it here on Medusa, but we have been scouted by Mr. Probe here. So gateway first, Mr. Rain. Oh, Nexus first from Rain. All right, let's go. I love it, man. You scout your opponent's hatch first. And sure, go for a command center first. Go for a nexus first. You can get away with it. Zerg player can't do anything to stop you from enjoying the beautiful benefits of having a nexus opening in a PVZ. It's a glorious feeling. It's going to have a million workers to four workers from Larva. It's going to be great. It's going to be so great. A little drink from my water there. All right. So, yep. I mean, obviously, a gateway next. Don't really need the forge, right? The forge is a defensive opening if it's a pool first or a nine pool or like an over pool. But eh, where it's a hatch first, you don't need a forge. Get some, you know, get a, some zealots out first. Get a forge just because if there is a giant ling flood later, you, having a couple cannons is useful. Having a lot of cannons against a bunch of hydras is also nice. So... Beep, boop. We'll see how this goes, man. Yeah, I'm just excited to see who's going to come out on top here. I do think Larva's a little bit favored, but you know what? These games are played... I guess it's like a 2020 replay, man. So this isn't like I'm playing replays. I'm casting replays in chronological order or anything. You know what I mean? It's not like Larva's on a hot streak. Because the games I've been casting of him over the last month, he's been amazing. Like, those have been games from, I don't know, this year, last year, the year before that. Maybe 2017. You know what I mean. Ooh, yep, yeah, this is Medusa. So you have this weird third or maybe a second base if you want it by going up. Where's my ramp up? Up. Uh. Oh, there it is. I'm stupid. Right next to the minerals. Right up here. And bam. You get a third base. Pretty easy. The trade-off is that it doesn't have any gas and the Zerg player wants the gas. Cybercore. So nothing crazy here in game number one. What is fun about best of series is that you will sometimes get games that are not standard for the channel, right? Falcon likes to cast long macro games, but in the case where it's a best of series, you gotta throw in some short games in there. You gotta throw in maybe a cannon rush attempt, maybe a proxy attempt if you're Protoss, maybe a pool firster if you're the Zerg. You know, just something to keep your opponent on their toes. If you do the same thing every game, they're gonna get used to it, they'll know the counters to exactly what you're doing. It'll become easy, and that's you don't want your opponent to feel like it's an easy time playing against you. That's when you lose. Unless they get overconfident, and then you can beat them? Hmm, I don't know. Tricky, actually. The psychology of that is maybe a little bit beyond what I'm capable of understanding. Did take a psychology class in college. I really enjoyed it. I might have majored in psychology, except for the fact that I have no interest in doing anything to do with psychology as a profession. So... <laughs> Blah. My youngest brother, though, he's in college right now, and he is pursuing a psychology degree. He wants to be a therapist, so that's some fun stuff. You know, brothers. 
sharing similar interests. It's how it works usually. A few wings popping up. Was Rain dumb enough to leave this wide open with no cannons? No? Cool. Well, maybe... Oh, oh my gosh, he did! Oh, no! I mean, not with no cannons, but the left side wasn't walled off. Medusa is a weird map for walling. Oh, this is so annoying. These aren't Jadonglings, but these are 100% Larvalings, man. Larva will mess you up. He's not going after the pylon, which I find a little bit interesting. I might go after the pylon, but I think he knows he can't get it. Not with just four lings, not with two zealots chasing him about here, but this is the most annoying. Ah, uh, for this stage of the game, I mean, it would be worse if there were like 40 lings that got in here because you failed to wall off the left side of your natural, which, ugh, that's just not a good start to this game, Rain. Again, weird map. Protoss, Terran hate weird maps. Oh, this is not happening. This is not happening. Oh, the probes have to get pulled down. Great probe pull to keep that cannon alive. These lings wanted to jump in with the help of their friends here and maybe take down that cannon. But another cannon's coming in. Rain is weathering this storm pretty effectively. Corsair trying to find stuff to kill, but man, there's already Scourge on the way. Hydralisk Den, Evolution Chamber on the way from Larva. I just go for a Hydra Push beyond this. I'm uh, not going for Storm. Robotic Support Bay. A Reaver Defense here, or perhaps Offense, from Rain to deal with these Hydralisks that he knows are coming. Both Reavers and Storm are pretty good against Hydras. I would say Storm has the edge. Just in general. But they're really good against Lurkers, man. If you have Reavers against Lurkers, you feel better about it than if you just have Storm. I feel like that's the case. It's just, it's bursty, bursty damage, right? One shot, bam, all the damage is there instantaneously. Whereas with Storm, you can technically Storm Dodge, which means the Storm starts, you get out of the way. You don't take the full brunt of that Storm. It's not amazing. It's not like you can avoid 90% of the Storm. You can avoid, like, I don't know, the last... 15% of that storm, but it's better than avoiding none of the damage, which is what happens when a reaver shot hits you in the face, right? Faster overlord movement coming in for scouting purposes and maybe worrying about the potential of DTs here. A DT defense against hiders that show up when there's no detection. Bad, bad for the Zerg player. Ling's just trying to make sure it's not easy to expand up to this left side base. Scourge, checking to make sure, you know, any dropships that move out. All oh, these lings finding this probe. Dude, this is good. Good probe micro, but not good enough. Probe goes down. That sucks. Third base delayed. Yeah, I think Larva is just enjoying himself here in game one. Like, let's not take too much away from game one here, right? And this isn't even over. Let's not take too much away from the first seven minutes and 55 seconds of game one, right? Because we don't know what's going to happen next. Look, Marva just got supply blocked. That totally sucks, and it does. I'm not being sarcastic. Another Overlord to kill. The supply. All right, Corsairs getting some work done. What did these? Oh, these Scourge want to kill that. They got that dr shuttle, but like four Scourge died, and another shuttle's not that hard to get right now. There wasn't a Reaver in there either. I'm pretty sure. Man, if there was a Reaver in there, that'd be the end of the world. I don't think so. I think Rain was smart enough to know there are Scourge about. I'm not trying to leave yet. I'm just baiting. And the baiting went a little bit too well. Four Scourge died, yes, but so did the shuttle. Hydros. Ooh, clumped up. Clumped up overlords, yes, because then you can protect them with your Hydras more easily, but also they take splash damage when they're next to each other. Gotta be so careful with that. Templar Archives is on the way here from Rain. Oh, yeah. But yeah, man, hit that like button, hit the subscribe. I'm trying to get up to 70,000 subscribers, and we're, we're moving. We're moving that needle here, so that's nice. Thank everyone who's been doing that. Okay, these are stacked temples, so look. Yeah, you're going to kill one, but guess what's going to show up next? Temple numero dos. And I think there's like eight in here. So this is why you make lurkers if you want to bust down this back wall. You have a million hydras. You have the ability to make a lurker den because you have a lair or lurker aspect to be researched because you have a lair. Yeah, I mean, man. The last time I saw somebody try and do it this way, it took 
forever. And the person whose back door was getting knocked down was aware it was happening because it takes forever. And then you chase the hiders away, or the, was it Marines the last time? Maybe it was Marines who were trying it the last time I saw that attempt. I don't know. I don't know. We're still trying to find overlords to kill as a fourth base comes up on this, I don't know, bottom right-ish corner. Or a larva. Uh, drop? Wait, 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 Man, I'm totally missed drop coming through that production tab. All right. Big time drop. He tries to, that was bait. That was a trick. That was trying to make Rain think he was knocking down the temples to get in the back door. He felt like he was safe. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, so this is really bad. Reaver drop on the other side's getting some work done though. Oh, okay. All the mining inside the main base of Larva is in a lot of trouble. All the main base of Rain's income is also super bad. Zealots to deal with these shenanigans. They've got upgrades. They have plus one attack. The Hydras have plus one attack too. And one of the Reavers dies, but the other one gets evacuated by that shuttle. Dude, so both players going for a drop at the exact same time. Did I miss a lot of drones dying? I know some drones died, but 22 seems low, even for... Show me how many... Show me... Show me... Show me... Show me how many... Uh, okay, not showing me how many kills this Reaver has, because it's a replay. Well, at least not while it's building scarabs. Dude, this fourth base. This fourth base is dead. It's 44 to 23 workers in favor of rain. How did it get mass hydra dropped there and not just get economy destroyed? Rain. Dude. Dude, 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 dude. Rain. I am impressed. Oh. Revert. Show me what you got. No. Fine. Fine. Don't show me what you got. I mean, it's probably going to die anyway. Oh, storm drop at the natural. Whoa. Whoa. Larva. Larva. Had rebuilt some drones there. He's back down to like 20, 24 after that storm drop. Remember when I said Larva was looking great in the first seven, eight minutes of this game? He was. But then Rain was able to survive the mass Hydra drop, get Reaver attacks in, get a Storm drop in. Now he's up 121 to 49 supply, and I think this game it might just be over. There's no lurkers. How are you supposed to deal with speed lots when you have no lurkers and no sunkens either? How are there n none whatsoever? Oh, I see you. I see you. You're gonna die. <laughs> Yeah, no. Uh, yep, third base done for the Zerg player. The maybe don't unload right there. My gosh, the shell cannot find a happy place. Oh, it found one. Happy place right here. Go. 15 kill Reaver. It's dead now. But dude, this is a speed lot storm attack where it's just Hydra's defending. The worst possible. This is the worst possible scenario for a Zerg player to try to deal with. Third base is dead. The ability to panic make anything has been lessened, and I think that's a GG. Oh my gosh, 23 workers. Larva keeps trying to rebuild his economy, but no, and that's it. GG, the little Korean eyes come out. Bam, game one goes to rain. Holy crap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was just, I, I thought Larva had this game one. He's doing great in economy. He's got a ton of Hydras out. He drops all over Rain's face. Rain loses none of his important buildings. Appears to lose like four probes to this. He ev evacs all of them up to the natural base and then just casually Reaver drops over here. Kills like, oh, I don't know, 10 workers or so. Another five Hydras. A storm drop comes into the natural. Unloading Zealots into this third base to wipe it out. And Rain just says, this is a good map for aerial assaults and drops. And it worked, man. It all started with the supply blocking with those Corsairs. I loved the play. I loved the play from Larva where he made Rain feel like he had more time because 
Larva was trying to get through this temple stack, but no. It was a trick the whole time, and it just didn't work. That was awesome. All right, so game one in the books. Amazing. Just calm, cool, collected there by Rain gets the win. 72,000 points from Larva, 80,000 from Rain out killing. Wow, almost a 3 to 1 kill death ratio from Rain there. I believe it. Structures raised, uh, 6 to 4, and then Rain out spending the Zerg player overall mm, by like 5,000 resources. Not good. Not good if you're Larva. Rain showing up, kicking butt, taking names. Let's see what game two has to offer. Game two, we're back on Medusa. Different spawning locations, though. Right side Larva, bottom side it is Rain. Man, rain, cool under pressure, good build order, good ideas on this map. Larva just kind of fell apart there under multiple drops and... Protoss, man, they are good sometimes. Not good enough to win in an ASL recently. Wait, hang on a second. ASL 11? Was that... Who was that? That was a Protoss player. It was not rain, but okay. <laughs> Terror the Overlord scouting out the wrong direction again on this three-player map, but that's okay. We still love you, Terry. We also have a Robert the Zealot shirt and a mug at falconpaladin.store. If you're looking for the merch, that's the place to be. All right, Probe. You're going to scout the right way this time. you got a one in two chance to find your Zerg opponent immediately. And, yep, based on this trajectory, it sure seems like you're going to find the Zerg player immediately. Who did go pool first? All right, here goes. That's a nine pool opener here from our guy Larva. He's got some plans, but, my gosh, it's so much harder to execute those plans when your opponent sees it and he knows what you're doing in the first two minutes. Look at this. This is why you scout, Protoss. If you're not scouting, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, look at that. Sees the pool, says, I know exactly what this is. I don't really don't need to be here anymore, but sure. Let's hang around. Let's maybe do a little drone harass. Force him to chase me instead of mining. That's good. Like, Larva wants as many minerals as he can to get those six lings out when he can. So, forge. Definitely a forge before you expand here. Are you afraid to expand because remember last game where the wall off wasn't perfect and a bunch of links slipped in right here? I really want to avoid a repeat of that. So maybe you take extra time, make sure your wall is sup. Never mind. Okay, just gonna Nexus. Just gonna afford to expand here. Expansion on the way from the Zerg player here, too. So the whole point of this pool first is to deal with a proxy, to be aggressive, or to deal with some kind of a cannon rush, but that's something we see a ton of in PvZ. Really more of a PvP thing, just because there's no creep in PvP, and Protoss can't lift off their buildings to escape a cannon rush like Terran can. Hey-o, hey-o, hey-o. Cannon first, then gateway. I'll snug up against this forge. Wings are out, but they know. They're not, they're not getting anything done here. He was hoping not to be scouted. But it's just a three-player map. I just feel like your ability to get this off without getting scouted is very, very low. Four-player map, maybe. Three-player map, there's only two other bases to check. They're not that far away. But as it stands, third base on the way from Larva. Getting a lair with his first hundred gas. He's not going to be aggressive at all. He did force the Protoss to be a little bit defensive, though. I mean, not that it was incredibly or defensive, right? A forge into a nexus? Uh-uh. <laughs> That's hardly... That is hardly a super defensive play whatsoever. Cybercore coming in. Again, Reigns up 1-0. to zero. This is a best of 9. So, going down 1-0 is... I'm not going to say meaningless. But it's almost meaningless. It really is not something that Larva should be that concerned about. I can't believe this probe is still here. This probe showed up at 150 or something and has just been hanging out until the four minute mark. Keeps getting punched in the face, but it's got that shield regen going. 
And if you're not going to get speed for your Ling... Ooh, that was a dangerous turn. That was actually... Okay, hold on. The Jukes. The Jukes. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, oh my gosh, the piloting here. The pro piloting here is nuts. Rain. That's what happens when you have 460 APM. You can keep a probe alive forever. Appar oh no, got hung up on that corner. Dead. Ah, as soon as I start saying forever, it dies. Need Stargate coming in. No big surprise. Where is our further tech? Larva. Hydralisk Den. Spire, something? Hydra Den. All right. So going Hydra Den here. It is a plus one air weapons. So it's going to be a lot of Corsairs. It was a lot of Corsairs in game one, too. Not like a, a lot of Corsairs is a, a unique thing to see in this matchup, obviously. Macro Hatch. Larva loves those. Falcon loves them, too. Zerg music echoing through the map. Game one allowed a bit of a Ling run by that was really nice for Larva. It didn't eventually amount to much, but it was awesome. This time, a mm, little more prepared for it, a little more aware of it here is Rain. Macro hatch, macro hatch. Corsair scouts the Hydra Den. Doesn't see a Spire. Says, okay, that's good. I don't have to really worry about Scourge two-shotting me. Hydras will kill me, but not in a two-shot type scenario. So much less babysitting needs to go on these Corsairs. Especially if you get the Corsairs under like some dead airspace that Hydras can't even get to. You don't have to worry about them there especially. Temple Archives warping in. So leg is getting started. So no real big changes here for Rain, except for the fact we didn't go for Fast Reaver. Robotics facility is going to be used for an observatory to deal with lurkers as they might come here. Keep an eye on that. Where's your storm? Archives is done. You want to get that storm done, man. That Fast Hydroden was not just for show. I Pretty sure a lot of Hydras are going to show up here soon. In fact, they're being made four at a time. Storm could get researched. You don't have enough minerals for it now. Fair enough. But, like, you want it? Yes? Fine? All right. Okay, well, the Hydras have arrived. Oh, it is a robotic support bay. Look at Rain. Doing whatever he wants to do, not what I think he should do. I like it. Okay, remember when I said DT is on defense and you don't have any detection with you? Yep. <laughs> That's what happened. The Overlords have speed, but also the Corsairs are mean. Oh man, one DT pops out. Doesn't even get a kill. One DT pops out, and that's it. That's it for any Hydra pressure that might have existed. Okay, okay. We have an Overlord now. Let's not leave the Overlord behind so the Corsairs can easily kill it. Because that would be super terrible for us. Reavers in production. Aspire is on the way. A little bit later in this game from Larva. Maybe a few more Lings this time. Yeah, Ling Hydra. That's the comp you want. Just Hydra. Not as good against Zealots, man. But Ling Hydra. Force multipliers. They are friends. Corsairs, yeah, just really don't have to die to Hydras unless they are being extremely careless. Just allowing themselves to take hits from Hydras for like 20 seconds. All right, the pressure is real here. Where's our Reaver at? There's a Reaver somewhere on the map. I don't know if there's any Scarabs yet. But, oh, hang on. The Overlords did get wiped out. Ooh, I don't know what's in that shuttle, but it the terrible, terrible pathing there. Let's try to send some Zealots up to the third base. Yes, fair enough. Storm is getting researched here at nine minutes. Fourth base on the way down here at about a five o'clock spot for the Zerg Flare. Another Overlord down. 
No supply block, because a bunch of overlords just popped at that minute. Yeah, we're kind of at a point where storms are going to exist, rivers are going to exist, speed lots are going to exist, and then that beautiful trilogy. Just three units that are so good against this mass hydra stuff. Where are the lurks, Larva? What part of you does not feel like you deserve the love of lurk? Why are making mutas? All right, man, you know how I feel about mutas. Mutas are good if they pick off I Templar. Beyond that... I don't know what value they've got in a world where there are plus one Corsairs soaring about, owning the skies, picking off overlords. Scourge, no chance. No chance against six Corsairs with plus one attack. Come on, come on. What are you trying to do here? Oh, and then Zealot Reaver, Dritter drop. Good drone evac there. Oh, the Zealot's just body blocking for this Reaver. Yeah, Corsair's coming in here too. Ooh, this revert. Dig it hits! It's alive! It's got 9 HP. Corsair's just supply blocking Larva into the absolute ground. Reaver does die. Mutas are forced to engage with this Corsair ball. Think better of it and retreat to help kill Zealots, which can't shoot back. Okay, two Corsairs did die, but the supply block on Larva is not 62 available supply to 80 used right now by the Zerg player. This is this is looking tough. Oh, okay. Muta is working together. Where, where the Corsairs are running for their lives. The Muta's get some nice strikes off on them and wipes out that Corsair ball. Okay. I mean, by that, I mean there's one left. Muta is trying to whittle down. Yeah, okay. Trying to whittle stuff down there, but uh, there are technically four mutas left, but three of them are walking dead. Still no third base here from Rain, which I find interesting. He's really considering it deeply and is sitting on about 900 minerals. Could do. Hey, Lurker Aspect. Lurker Aspect is coming in, but it's not quite done yet. That's a lot of Hydras, though. How much Storm do you have? Oh, I've got like five High Templars, so how many do you need, says Rain. Beautiful Storms. My gosh, the Storms are good. But are they enough? Suddenly, uh, suddenly it seems like it wasn't enough. Was that trade ample? Don't know. Reaver in the main base. Getting some work done there. Zealots into the fourth base, getting cleaned up by just the sheer number of Hydras. Hmm, so Larva holding on here, doesn't want to go down 2-0 in this best of nine, and I cannot blame him for that. It's the time of the game where lurkers start to be a threat, Rain recognizes that, so he's going for the singularity charge upgrade. Getting that range up. 51 to 51 workers, that's not where you want to be, Rain. That's This third base has been delayed so much. And Range is casually sitting here on four bases. These mutas are so dead. Oh, good split, though. But two of them died regardless of the split. Yeah. Larva, despite the reaver drops, really hasn't taken that many hits to his drone count, and that's big. Compared to the last game where he was down to like 21, 22 drones at this stage of the game. Wasn't feeling super healthy economically. And then one of his bases died. Then another one of his bases died. But he's in a much better position now. Yeah, just pumping nine dragoons at a time. Looks like Rain did do a little bit of replenishing on that Corsair group after losing all but one of them. That's good. Free probe. <laughs> really? You're just trying to, gonna try to naked expand up to a fourth base rain? You don't know there's Hydras cruising out here. Oh, another, another Muta dad. Did they kill any High Templar today? Not really, no. I guess they killed a couple Corsairs. That's nice, but for what they cost, I just don't know about this. Queen's Nest. Morphin' in. Overlord down, no supply block, Scourge, no. 
beautiful juking here on these Corsairs. Yeah, Arin's doing a pretty good job with that. Oh, these Corsairs are like, I know where the Hydras are going to be coming from. Ooh, juke, juke hard. And they do. All right, one manages to get wiped out. Larva can kill one of them, but three escape, taking some hits, not what they're happy about. 155 to 131 supply in favor of rain. This even worker count and this extra base that Larva is rolling with has got to be a major concern for Protoss players everywhere. Storm exists. Reavers exist. So dealing with this is not impossible. And in fact, could go very well from rain. Storm one. Ah, ah, ah. One storm. A hive coming in makes sense, considering we saw the Queen's Nest coming in just a minute ago here. Ooh, good snipe on that shuttle. What was that shuttle doing? That was some terrible control. Hey, look, bait them. Bait them into these lurkers. But there is detection, and there are a ton of dragoons. So the lurkers evacuate from the premises because of that reason. Too many dragoons for that to be a viable... A lurkers to be a viable answer to them, especially out in the open of the map there. So Rain shoves the army away so that a fourth base can get warped in on this left side. Yeah, and Rain is suddenly up to 172 supply. He's not maxed out, but he is threatening to get there. And Adrenal's on the way immediately. Defile around. I'm not sure it's getting started here. This is an army that is just asking for a plague. Every Zerg player watching this has said, please plague this army. Oh, boy. The Hydra damage output. 2-1 upgrades on those guys. Good. 2-0-0 zero, zero from the Protoss gateway units. Adrenal is going to be a godsend for Larva, but he really needs a Defiler Mound. He is excellent with Plague. He's excellent with Dark Swarm. Plague's probably going to be better for you here than Dark Swarm is. Although Dark Swarm on the Lurkers is amazing, but I guess we're not getting that. Just a big Ling Hydra. The Adrenal Ling are trying to get stuff in here, but there's just not enough of them to really make much of a difference. I like the Concave and the spread that Larva has. Ah, just ate most of the storm there down to the south. Those poor hydralisks. <laughs> Zerg blood just littering the battlefield here. Keep waiting for Larva to maybe expand? Or, I don't know, get a defiler mound. Neither of these things are happening, and I worry about him. I just ate that storm, too. Reaction time not super hot for Larva the last couple minutes. The Filer Mound got started, everyone. It's okay. Emergency over. Is it too late, though? My gosh, the swarm, though. The absolute swarm. Just, wow. Just rolling this army. I mean, look, rain can replenish to a certain extent here. But just Dragoons against a Ling, Adrenal Ling, Hydra Lurker army, not going to have a great time. Ob's getting picked out. Good Micro getting out of there. True. Corsairs are trying to find Overlords to kill down here at the third base. Or the fourth base, I guess that was. That Scourge could have killed that Corsair, but went for a different one instead. Scourge are dumb, man. Okay, 134 to 126 supply. Remember how Rain was way up in supply? Not anymore. Dragging the army away. And then sending a bunch of Zealots down to the fourth base. There's a handful of Adrenalings here. They've got 1-1 one, one upgrades. But not against speed lots with two attack. Oh, this base is in trouble. Oh, dude, rain. He's buying time to re-macro up here. More High Templar being produced. He's going to snipe an entire hatchery. All these zealots are dead. But the hatchery, what? He saves it with 33 HP. No way. No way did he save that hatch. That's insane. Holy crap! Okay, I think that was a huge, huge moment for this game. If that base goes down, I think Larva's in trouble. He kept it. He kept it. It is very vulnerable, but it's not dead yet. Oh, his look, man, if all of those lurkers and hydras just showed up at this base, that might just be a GG. 
Corsairs are trying to find damage wherever they can here, trying to keep the Zerg player on the back foot. Oh, wait, what? Blah, 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 blah. Did a Dragoon drop back? He did. And a Storm drop up the right side here, too. Drops a Dragoon to finish off that hatch. Unload. Ah. Kill some drones. It's 46 here. And this base died. Dude. Dude. Drops. Consumes on the way. Defiler's in play here. There are no Reavers or High Templar at this fourth base at all from Rain. You Dark Swarm this and send in four Zerglings and you win. That's a dead base. That is the deadest of bases. Rain coming up. He recognizes that that base dies. He's in a lot of trouble, so he's not going to at least make it easy. Boy, I don't know. Rain is back up. 20 supply. He sniped that hatch. Forced to rebuild. There's still no plague researched here, which means you can just kind of zealot dragoon this thing. Drenalings are going to be a big part of this, so that's why the High Templar are required. But when the storms evac, the storms are gone. What's left here for the Protoss army? I don't know. Forcing a cancel on that base is huge, though. Yep, did force a cancel. That's big. Dude, Larva's in trouble. Larva's in a lot of trouble all of a sudden. Worker count, 43 to 50 probes. He, not only does he keep his undefended base alive, he snipes the base again. This fourth base again. Yeah, Larva needs to expand or win now, and I don't see a win now button for him. I'm looking at what he's got. He's making eight mutas to try to pick off these high Templar, and then maybe his ground army can win it. Because it's really the storm that is keeping these lings at bay right now. Good snipe on those obs. That was great target firing. Archon down, adrenal wings with two one upgrades. Two, two almost, but almost only counts on horseshoes and hand grenades. 153 to 124 supply now in favor of the Protoss Larva. Larva is looking like he's going to go down 2-0 in this best of nine, which again, not the end of the world, but n n no good, not good, not even the tiniest bits of good. Mutas, High Templar down, Oop, storming himself, two and three, okay, three High Templar killed, good, good job Mutas, that's what you're intended to do in this matchup. Little drop, sending a storm on up. Muta count is such. Good storm. Oh my gosh, great storm. That guy walked into the second one. 34 drones remain to 50 probes. This has been knock down, drag him out. Rain is still not super comfortable about getting a fifth base, but. Oh man. And a larva's attempt at a new fourth base up here at the one o'clock. Not going well. I mean, the hatch is alive. It only has 100 HP, though, and we've seen how capable Rain is of sniping off hatcheries that have very low HP counts. But Larva setting up a huge attack on the newest source of income. Ooh, High Templar down. Still a High Templar remaining in this battle. It's like a tower defense thing or something. Here comes the swarm. Use your special abilities to take them down. My gosh, did they? But it is what is enough. No. A handful, remember what I said, a handful of lings can bust through here? Yes. So this base is dying. Holy crap, 125 to 113 supply. The probe count gets just removed. There are barely any workers working here for rain right now. Lings are just kind of trying to pick off individual dragoons. Any high templar they see fighting against zealots, which isn't necessarily recommended at this stage. They don't have the upgrades for that necessarily, but just pumping lings. Trying to dodge storms. Trying to A-move into this army. The Mutas finding High Templar. Forcing the High Templar to storm their own units a little bit here. Do good snipe on those obs too by the Mutas. Great target firing by Larva. Lurker's way more effective now. You can still blind fire storm. 
to take it out. But look at this. This is all the income right now that Rain has. This base is massively important. There are still minerals in the main base from Larva, because that's how Zerg works. But, oh, good. Ling attack on this Dragoon. Heavy army in the middle here. Good target firing on that High Templar. He dead. Zealots are racking up kills, but their friends are dying all around them here, too. 92 to 8, 81 supply. This is an absolute scrap fest right now. Two two wings versus Zealots that have plus three attack and no armor, but it's like a one Zealot per Zergling situation. I don't know. It is a desperate stand for Larva right now. Scourge are here for reasons. I guess to kill Observers, but there aren't any of those, so that's fine. Oh, Zealots willing to sacrifice their lives to try to take down that hatch. No, too many Lurkers. They survive, but they're Zealots free inside your natural and inside your main and inside your third base too. Ah, Larva. I think Larva is going down. It's not over yet. It's not over yet. Drones evacuating to the new fourth base, which again is very vulnerable. New obs to deal with those zealots. Well, to help the zealots to kill the lurkers. <laughs> no re expanding from rain. Not today. Finding that ob is huge. Oh my gosh. Good ob. Great ob snipe. Changes everything, but the Zealot's absorbing the hits. The Dragoon comes in, does the hits on the hatchery. Oh, the Zealot did it themselves. Never mind, hatch dead! No! Zealot's inside the main, killing drones. Where There are 26 drones. I guess they're all here. They need to go down. I guess they can mine for the mineral patches in the main base, even though that's barely anything. But Rain doesn't even have that. Rain has no income. He's got 48 minerals. And I think Larva might have done this just by having a mining base and a dream. And these Mutas picking off Observers, picking off High Templar, doing the work today. <laughs> and that's it. Rain. Looks like looks like a, a tap out, possibly. What are we trying to do with this empty shuttle? He's scouting to see if this base exists. He's going to run into Scourge and die, though. Just kidding. Too smart for that. Does not run into Scourge and die, but caught the attention of the Scourge. Alerted the Horde. Startled the Witch. And your shuttle is dead. Like, I don't know if that really matters. Yeah, there's nothing here. That's it. We're done. That's a GG. Rain has 48 minerals. No real ability to get any more larva. Long, long, long distance mining from this fourth hole. Ah, finally having enough money to rebuild that base. 71 to 26 supply, 19 of which for the Protoss are probes. Where's the rest of that supply? What do we think? A couple Zealots, a High Templar, a Dragoon. Yeah. I'm really surprised that Rain hasn't tapped out here. I'm confused. I don't know what Z means in this context, or what that is either. But yeah, this game's over. So GG, well done Larva, he ties the series up one to one. I mean, it's gonna take him a minute to like get a Dark Swarm up and come wipe this out, but it is a foregone conclusion. All right, Google Lens, what do you got for me? That's a GG. Oh, that's a GG, obviously. Ah, oh, it's too late. Okay, I'll have Lens ready better, uh, ready for the next game at a better time, but wow! I think that game gets an epic tag just all by itself for that ending there. Larva is left long distance mining eight miles to a base forever away from his own house. Protoss is at 48 minerals. Nothing else happening here. So... Many lings died. So many drones and probes died. Bases went down. Knock down, drag them out game two for sure. Well done. 201,000 points from rain, 201,000 points from larva. That's how close this was.
Point total, about 700 more for Larva is all. 700, that's it. Larva outproduced, got out killed by a big ratio there. Structures raised. Money's going to be the big deal here. Rain, okay. Rain outspends Larva by about a thousand resources and loses today. That is not something that should ever happen. I don't know how that happened. It's kind of a miracle. Huh. What a win there from Larva. Tying it up. Feeling better about himself, that's for sure. <sighs> All right. Well, look, we're two games into a best of nine so far. So maybe take a break. Go get a snack or something and come back for game number three. Hit that like button if you haven't already. Game number three of this best of nine is on Overwatch. Top left, Protoss. Bottom right, it is Zerg. Woof, what a series so far. I feel like that game, too, could have had an epic tag all by itself if I cast it on its own on the channel. Again, thanks, RJB, for providing so, so, so many amazing replays. This channel would be much, much worse off without you. That is certainly the truth. Yo, so this is a two-player map. So Terror the Overlord knows where to scout to find the Protoss, which means he's going to get killed by a Dragoon. Well, maybe not killed by a Dragoon, but a Corsair, certainly, unless he hides very, very well. Yeah. That game, too. I had to, like, go walk around for a minute before coming back to this. I was hype. I was feeling it. So Probe says, my job is to get a pylon and then head on down and see what I can get by way of scouting information. That's not how probes talk. That's how SCVs talk. Probes go, which for them is saying, I'm going to go down and scout those Zerg and see what's going on. Must get some eyes down here on our newly established base here on Overwatch. Oh, overpooling. All right. So we've gone hatch first, we've gone nine pool, and we've gone over pool here today. Fine. Probe comes in, sees what's going on, sees the pool is not as far along as a pool first would be, but sees where it is regardless and says, all right, fine. That means I'm going to make a forge, and I'm going to expand, and I'm going to make a gateway, maybe a cannon first. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Everything will be fine. Expansion, go. Oh, that almost got blocked. That was very close. That was very close for that hatchery. Forge, expand. Cannon, gateway. We know how this works. Yep. We sure do. What's going on in the world? Uh, Oppenheimer's coming out soon. The Barbie movie is coming out soon on the same day. I think I'm going to go see both of those with my sister. Just work that out. Do I want to see them on the same day? It seems like some kind of uh, tonal whiplash to do that. <laughs> Like the third base, Larva's been doing good with its third base timings today. Or he's like, look, Rain's not trying to kill me with the two gate. Rain has no interest in that whatsoever. So let's just get a third hatch up this right side. Traditionally, third bases are more down here for Zerg players. But, uh, all right. Third base here might be a bit of a hiding attempt from Larva to make sure, or at least attempt to see if he can keep that away from the spying eyes of that probe who is still alive. And is forcing Larva to use all sorts of tricks to try to catch it and kill it. But so far, those tricks have not gone very well. Reminds me of all those Warner Brothers cartoons where it's Wile E. Coyote trying to catch the Roadrunner. Or Elmer Fudd trying to murder Bugs Bunny. Or uh, Tom and Jerry. Tom's trying to kill Jerry. Like, there's just Sylvester Cat trying to get Tweety Bird. Like, there's a 
long history of chase and be chased situations in cartoons from many, many, many decades ago. I'm not quite that old that I was around when they were first run, but they were getting second run when I was a kid, so that's how old I am. Yeah, I don't know. I wonder if that had some kind of an effect on the psyche of a couple of generations of kids. <laughs> I mean, from a writing standpoint, it's just nice to have a chase because you can add a lot of different stuff into it. Right, because the chase is always moving, so you can change scenes as fast as you want. Ooh, more Ling's on the way. Is this a Ling bust? Oh my gosh, this might be a Ling bust attempt, y'all. Look at this. Look at this Ling count. Okay, Zealot, very important. This Zealot also very important. Can they still slip up here? Yeah, man, it's a bunch of way more Ling's than he's made. In the first two games, come on. Can he get in? He's like, can I get in? Is there a gap? Is there a gap? No, but if we all pounce on this gateway, can we kill it before the cannon kills all of us? And the answer is yes. But it's going to buy time for Rain to respond. Get some probes back here. Keeping that cannon alive is everything right now. Probes dying to keep the cannon alive. And they do. My gosh, they do. And guess what? A lot of probes died, but a lot of lings were, or a lot of drones were cut to make this happen. So it's still 25 probes of 16 drones. Uh, yeah. I, I don't, I don't think that was worth it. But guess what? We're still sending lings across. It's fine. Oh man. Okay, two cannons, bunch of probes, putting their bodies in between those zerglings and them cannons. One cannon down. Second cannon having to put in a ton of work here. Zealot putting in a ton of work here. Two probes putting in a ton of work here. My gosh, Rain. What an absolutely sick hold there. The positioning of the probes, the Zealot, the cannon. Oh, is that GG? It, there's Mutas on the way. That's nice, but there's Corsairs coming in too. So, like, there's already Corsairs by that, I mean. It's a... Uh, it's a fine idea. Ling Flood. Maybe screw up the economy, screw up the tech timings of your Protoss opponent and see if they maybe forget to make those Corsairs and then make Mutas behind it. But I think Rain is having a fine time of it right now. Boy, howdy, Rain. Yeah, Mutas are... Nah, nah, no... Couple Scourge making the Corsairs rethink their life choices about engaging here, but also Larva not exactly... Okay, he's going for it. He going for it. Corsair dead. Another Corsair shows up. Muta's very injured, but not dead yet. Probe keep dying, but I... Keep wanting to point your attention to the worker count at the top right there. Rain's fine. He's at 21 probes to 16 drones. Every pair of wings is a drone that doesn't exist right now. So if you have to sacrifice probes to stay alive, guess what? It's okay, Protoss players. It's just all right. Mm, second gateway going to die here, which is annoying. Dude, this is usually kind of a following up bad with more bad situation. That's how I tend to see this. But if anyone can make this work, I kind of feel like it's a larva. Look at these probes body blocking for this cannon. Look at them. They're war heroes, all of them. Keeping that cannon alive. Get a couple shots off. No, it's not enough. Rain. His greed actually kills him here. He didn't think Larva would commit to this many lings. He kept trying to probe up. Kept trying to be like, I'll be fine. Whether the first two storms, I'm still way up economically. And then 20 more lings showed up. And no, that was just like a 16, 15 worker play. This hatchery was solely for Larva today. That was not for income. Maybe that's why it was here. He knew he didn't have to defend it. He was going to be aggressive with it. He was going to either... Win with aggression or die trying. A lot of lings died. 
but they were also war heroes. They ended up dying in service of getting the win. The Corsairs eventually wiped out the Mutalist camp, but the Mutas were more effective than I thought they would be. Very nice stuff. We've got um, yeah, handful of lings down here. The army value for Protoss is basically these two Corsairs lost his gateway. No more zealots popping. No more cannons happening. He was dead and he knew it. So he tapped out, and that is Larva taking a 2-2-1 two, two, lead in this best of nine. 23,000 points and a very short game to 19,000 in favor of the Zerg. 2-1 to one out production here by the Zerg player. Kill-death ratio not quite a 2-1. to one. It's going to hurt. Buildings raise 8-0 to zero is a big indicator. And again, rain out spending the Zerg in a game. But in this situation, it makes more sense. It's less confusing than game two. Not spending your opponent in eight minutes when they're a Zerg player, when all they did was make Lings and Mutas and come try to kill you, means you made too many probes and too few other things like cannons and zealots. If you had a couple more cannons and a couple more zealots and cut a few more probes, you would have been fine. But too many probes. Too many, I say. That's tough. It is tough to know how many is too many. I, I recognize that. Hmm. Okay, so that's a 2-1 lead now by Rain in this best of nine. Let's see what's coming next. Guess what I think it is? It's going to be more StarCraft. We're on Circuit Breakers for game number four. It's a 2-1 Larva lead. Top left, it's Protoss. Top right, it is Zerg. Man, after losing game one there, Larva seemed like he was in a tiny, tiny bit of trouble, but now he's 2-1. So that trouble is behind him now. Wow. Just so, so, so much aggression there. It looks like me sometimes on ladder, but I don't win those games because I overcommit to lings and my opponent knows how to deal with it. <laughs> very, very sad. All right, <clears throat> Terry the Overlord doing Terry things. Our little probey probe gonna throw down a pylon, get some scouting out on this giant four-player map of antiquity. This map's been around for like, golly, 20 years now, 15 years now. It's very good. It's kind of Terran favored, but there are no Terrans today, so it doesn't matter. We got a cross-spawn scout. Oh. He's going to try to cover two bases here by seeing if the Overlord is coming down. And then if it is, if it's coming down or coming up, he knows where. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. He knew. He kn Ah. Actually, man, weeks ago, maybe months ago, I saw that happen. There wasn't an Overlord here, but I was like, why did the probe scout this area? In the comments, let me know that's why. It's so that you see where the Overlord is coming from. And then you extrapolate where the Zerg player is, and then you go scout him, and you see, hey, look! It's another overpool play. Actually, was that a nine pool? It's... Whatever. It's a pool firster. Let's see if Rain maybe probes a little bit less in response to this. It's just tough. It's tough because you don't know. You don't know when the larva is going to stop sending waves of lings at you and start making drones. You can't read his mind, and he can do it whenever he wants. Tricky. Mm, okay, so hatch coming down. Yeah. Second hatch on the way. Same opening. The opening was fine for Rain in the last game. It was just too many probes, not enough cannons. And keeping this probe alive is a really big part of that. The thing is, the probe died. And then Larva started pumping lings, and Rain was in the absolute dark about that. Third base again. Larva does like getting that third base, whether for drones and mining or just for larva production. It's good. Third players, get that third base at three minutes if your opponent's going for this. Because that's what it is. Macro opening here from Rain to keep up. Getting that third base faster is better. But yeah, if you're enjoying the cast here today, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe. You can also click the join button down below to become an actual official channel member. 
to the Falcon Paladin Brood War channel, which is a pretty cool thing to do. About 50 of you are already members, which is nice. You can do it for as little as a couple bucks a month. Buck 99 is the lowest tier. It then goes up. From there, five bucks, ten bucks. It just keeps going if you're interested in supporting me. If not, no worries. It's just an option for someone who might want to do it on a platform they're already on. They're like, I don't want to go to a third-party platform. I'm on YouTube right now. Well, by golly, YouTube's a good place to be. Additionally, you can just do a one-time donation by clicking the uh, thanks button down below. That'll just do a one-time non-recurring donation just to express your thanks for the cast today. I really appreciate those as well. And honestly, if you want to support me in a way where most of your money gets to me and less of it goes to the platform you're supporting me on, PayPal. So if you support me through PayPal, one-time donation to falconpaladin at gmail.com, most of your money, like 99.99% of it will come to me, whereas it's a lower number if you go to Patreon or if you're here on YouTube uh, supporting me. So just keep that in mind. All right, Zerglings, poking, Metabolic Boost on the way, Spire coming in, drones are being made. So already has more drones now than he did in the entire last game. Which indicates that Larva's more interested in a bit of a macro contest here today. Not trying to kill his opponent through the powers of sheer Ling flooding. Oh my gosh, Zealot, you had one job. You had one job, man. Oh, these probes are the... We'll, we'll block the ramp. We'll fight with the cannon. Oh, that was actually sick. Zero lings get inside the main base. Probes died, yes. But again, it's 28 probes to 21 drones, so it's fine. Zealot makes it across the map. Kills nothing. Takes some HP away from those poor, poor drones. And would you be surprised if I told you there are Corsairs being produced and the Templar Archives warping in? No. You... W oh, what is this gap? Uh, so... Remember when I was like, Rain should be a little more careful about how many probes he makes and how few cannons he makes, and then he didn't make any more cannons? Dude, this is lost mining time, if nothing else. I mean, this is a... Look at this. These guys, they're like trying to keep this cannon alive. They have to allow the Lings into the main base now, so they get an absolute full scout off. Zealot gets into the third base, though. Gets a kill. By that I mean... Gets two kills, because he killed a Ling, too. Oh, more Zealot. Ah, but more Lings are here, too. Yeah, so no drones down. 27 to 33 workers, that feels pretty good for Larva. He's like, all right, I'm not up. I'm not feeling terrible about my economic situation either. Plus one air weapons, neat. DT moving out. DT, DT, he's on the way, DT. Any detection here at the third base? By golly, yes, there is detection at this third base. Thank you for asking. There are three overlords providing redundant amounts of detection. And DT is rebuffed immediately. Oh, hello, Cinnamon. Cinnamon came in to say hello. And to say, I want to be let outside, please. It's a beautiful evening out there. And it's a good point, Cinnamon. But I am casting Starcraft right now. But I will do that in a minute, kitty. Ooh. Hopping up behind the desk. It's a dangerous place to be, kitty. Don't unplug anything. Okay. Meanwhile, a lot of gateways are warping in. Fancy. I really haven't seen Rain do anything too nuts today, have we? It's been Larva who's been mixing it up a bit. Oh, DT, really? Yeah, I don't know what damage he did there. Doesn't seem like it's much. 37 workers for the Zerg player is a fine place to be right now. Scourge, or like, do you have a cannon? You do? Huh. Surprise! 
Corsair count hiding a little bit. There are six of them. That plus one attack is finishing. And it's Muta's. Dude! All right, look. Larva has made Mutalisks twice against a Corsairing Protoss and won both times. So you know what, Larva? Oh, the Scourge Ambush! Holy crap! The Scourge Ambush was insane! And that's it! Rain GG's out! Dude, Larva, you monster! We gotta, we gotta see that set it, that setup again. What was that? That was bait, man. That was, hey, come in. I don't have any hydras yet. All I have are you know, just a couple stupid mutalisks. Just sit over here. You can win this. And then look, there are, he hides them down. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Yeah. So at the end of the day there, he knows. He knows that Larva's got six Mutas. There are no Corsairs out. There's a couple cannons to defend, but... It's a little bit of an early GG here, but it's understandable. Your entire Corsair group just died without getting hardly anything done. That is a tough, tough place to come back from as an elite Protoss player. And you're going against Larva, especially. Yo! Larva! Ends up taking a 3-2-1 lead, winning three games in a row in this best of nine. After game one, I was not feeling great about that, but all these games have been different. They've all been interesting in their own way. 28,000 points from Larva, 23,000 from Rain. Uh, yeah, 15 units killed by our guy Larva here, and six of those, almost half of them, were Corsairs. So that's not great. And outspending the Protoss. Good job. First time in the last couple games outspending the Protoss player. Actually, is the first time today? Maybe. Whatever. Good stuff, man. GG. So, this is not looking good for Rain. Larva seems to be in a position where, I mean, a best of nine means you got to win five games. So, he's only two games away from being the ultimate victor here. Rain's got to pull some stops out. I think doing the same build over and over is not really working for him. So maybe he'll try something else here next. Who knows? We will very soon. Don't go anywhere. Hey, we're back on Overwatch. Different spawn locations, though. Top left, Zerg. Bottom right, Protoss. Like I said, I think Rain needs to mix it up here. Larva is just kind of predicting what Rain will do because he's done it every single time here today. And he's up 3-1 because of it. Whoosh. Ba -dum, ba -dum. Anyway, hope you guys are all doing great. Having a wonderful time. What else is going on in the world here? My kids are on summer vacation. One of them just doing little tennis lessons at the local high school. I mean, look. That sounds like rich people talk, but it was like $30 for 12 lessons or something. And I think it's high school kids doing it that are teaching the kids. So... It's nothing fancy. And then my daughter wants to do soccer, and my oldest is trying to find a summer job, and ah, summertime. Summertime and you've got the kids. They're all really enjoying not being in school. They're like, when does my brain stop telling me I have to go back to school the next Monday? And it's like, I don't know, it depends. It varies, but I know the feeling. Man, especially when I was in college, I just, there was always something due during the semester, right? So I'd finish a semester of college, everything would be done, I'd be on break, and my brain would be like, hey, there's something due. Hey, there's something due. And I'm like, shut up. I'm trying to watch TV. Stop telling me there's something to do. There's nothing due. There's no work. It's break time. Ah, so yeah, my kids have the same thing that I do, apparently. Fairly common, I imagine. Another little overpooly play here from Larva. The thing about this is, this isn't a tell of any real aggression. This is just in between being able to defend against early zealots and being aggressive. And being economic yourself, right? Dude, seriously though. Forge. Nexus. Cannon. Like, Rain's being robotic about this. It's not that Larva's doing builds that no one has ever seen before. That's not what I'm trying to say here, but he is mixing it up to a level. He's gone hatch first a couple times. He's gone pool first, he's gone nine pool a couple times, he's gone uh, over pool a couple times. Okay, 
There's only been five games so far. Four games so far, so that can't be accurate. But it just feels like it, doesn't it? It feels like Larva is doing different things and Rain is not. That's my point. Once again, third base around three minutes. So Larva is just repeating what he's done the last couple games himself. With the overpool, with the third hatch at three. And from here, if he wants to Ling Flood, he can. And if he wants to macro up, he can. And if he wants to win with like 10 Lings and a couple of Mutas, sure, he can do that too. Yeah, that last game was more about <laughs> The secret scourge coming from an unknown angle. But look, man. Rain is nothing if not predictable here, right? I mean, look. Having Corsairs to deal with your opponent if they show up with a bunch of mutas is great. But maybe don't commit so much to Corsairs just out of the blue immediately. Maybe go for a faster reaver drop. Or a faster storm drop. Or just a traditional, you know, plus one zealot speed zealot attack on the third base. This is a great base to attack with zealots because there's two entrances. It's hard to sim city this into the point where zealots don't feel comfortable coming in there. I did like the early zealot pressure in the last game. I think it kept Larva on his toes and slowed him down a little bit. And really, the last game wasn't a question of anything other than getting ambushed by Scourge, right? So I really can't say that Rain messed up in any way in the last match. Another Hydro Den opening. So he's kind of switched between going Spire first and going Hydro Den first here today. But I think he'll go for a Spire two. Hey, look, it's a lot of lings. All right, so, yeah, probes. Stop me if you've seen this one. Does rain change up at all? No. Does he have another cannon at this point in the game? Nope. He's got a couple, maybe one more zealot than normal. Larva taps out. What? Dude, that's two games where there's one engagement and then the one player is like, oh, I'm out. That's it. I'm not getting through a three zealot hard wall with a cannon behind it. This is better cannon placement, right? Okay. Wow. So he was going for another Link Flood and this time an extra zealot of little better cannon positioning. And his two, per or his two Lings inside the main base got killed. So he doesn't have any scouting information. Once again, I feel like the last game and this game could have been played out. And it might have been something that the player who is disadvantaged could have come back and won. But these are much better players than I am. They're much better at reading the game state than I am. I, Larva knew everything that was going on. It's not like he's playing this in the dark. He knows the probe count, right? He went through there. He knows what tech exists. He just recognized he was down bad and worker count. Uh, further ling attacks are not going to get much done here. We got hiders on the way. <sighs> Could have been played out. I'm just going to I'm going to die on that hill. Could have been played out. Very strange that it wasn't. So 9,000 to 7,000 points here in favor of Rain. 14 to 3 kill that ratio is pretty good even if it's in a 5 minute game. And Rain outspends the Zerg player. There we go. And it's a win. For the Protoss, pulling it to a 3-2. Still in favor of Larva. Not done yet. These are never over until they are over. Hmm. All right, that was good. That was something uh, something a little bit weird there. Let's keep this, this whole series on the move. No reason to stall anymore. And let's see what is coming up.
For game six, we're on desert tiles. It's Coliseum. At top right, it's our Protoss. Bottom left, it is our Zerg. All right, man. So Rain has won two games doing pretty much the same thing for every single game here today. Do a cannon rush. It's a four-player map. Well, hard to do a cannon rush on a four-player map. Maybe a two-gate? Maybe a DT rush? Maybe a DT Corsair play? Maybe you've figured out the Ling Flood from Urgai Larva, but... I, I just I just don't know. <laughs> so again, everyone, thanks so much for watching this today. Hope you're enjoying it. It's kind of a bit of a goofier cast. A little bit longer than usual. I think some of you see a cast that's like an hour long and go, hmm. But others of you are like, oh, yes. An hour an hour long of StarCraft. Yes, thank you. We'll do that. With I mean, rain and larva. Are you kidding me? Can't ask for much more. I mean, I certainly could, but... Hmm. Ah, did I also mention I'm teaching my oldest how to drive? He got his learner's permit last month, and it's just been... It's been good, honestly. I think there are two kinds of kids when it comes to driving. The people that are nervous, and the ones who are not nervous. And the ones who are not nervous are the ones who are scary. Those are the ones who take chances when they're learning how to drive, and they're not as attentive to their surroundings, and it uh, can be tough to teach them to be attentive, right? But the ones that are nervous... They're already attentive because they're worried. And that's been my oldest. Like, he's just, you know, he's taking it slow, taking it easy. Like, doesn't want to do anything crazy as a Nexus first comes up here from Rain. Pretty, a little bit, little bit risky. But getting away with it because Larva went hatch first, too. Which, this map is pretty easy to get a second base, so it makes sense that both players would do this. Tiny, tiny bit of a risk. And a drone coming up. What is up, my guys? Like, is there a Nexus coming up up here? Yes, there is. Anyway, point being, he's been great. He's been great to teach. He's been very willing to learn, very cautious. And I think he's going to be a good driver, which is nice. Of course, the car insurance still went up like a billion percent, but new drivers do account for like 60% of all accidents, I suppose. I made up that statistic, by the way. I don't know what the real number is, but it's pretty bad. Cannon, Gateway, Nexus first. So look, that is something Rain has done differently here today, has gone for a Nexus first instead of a Forge Expand. So fine. He's been mixing up his builds a tiny bit. But not really to the point at three minutes you could tell. You know what I mean? Hey, look. It's a Gateway, it's a Forge, it's a Cannon, and it's a Nexus. Is that any different than what we've seen in any other game today? No. And to be fair, Larva 2, third base at three minutes. Going for a lair. I don't think he skipped lair today. The probe does go down. All right, that's a win. That's always a win. Scouting worker, scouting overlord, anything scouting you in the first three to five minutes dying is a massive victory. Stargate. Ling speed. Like what I'd like to see maybe is Larva go for a uh, fourth base now and a fifth base, and just take this whole bottom half of the map for himself, while Rain is maybe prepping for another Ling Flood, or maybe some Muta Harass, right? But that's why the Corsairs exist. They can be defensive, they can be offensive, they're great at scouting because they're fast. So getting away with that is pretty tough to do as plus one air weapons get started at 430, and Aspire is the first lair building today. I guess Hydroden's not a lair building, but you know what I mean. It's going to be Spire before Hydroden. I 
I should play through the campaign again. It's been a while. It's been a couple years since I went through the Brood War campaign and the StarCraft campaign. The StarCraft campaign is annoying because they had no idea how to place mineral patches and gas for your bases. You remember this. You know what I'm talking about. You'd have, like, on this base, the minerals would be all over here, like, spread out in a line, and then your gas would be down here. And you're like, thanks, Blizzard. Thanks for the map design. I guess I have to make two nexuses? I don't know. This sucks. It's so frustrating. Very entertaining, though, because it's not something you have to do today, but it's just kind of good nostalgia to be like, oh, remember when maps were bad? Oh, it was a good time. Nostalgia, you know? <laughs> That's robotic support, bay. So that Rain has been interested in getting Reavers out fairly quick today, which is fun. Never going to say no to a little Reaver shenanigans. It's gotten some good work with it done in one game. The other game did not go all that well. That is kind of the nature of the Reaver, though, right? It's like either amazing or it sucks. And it... Oh, God. That's a great angle from Larva. Wow. So Larva Supply Block, but killing that first Corsair is awesome. Cannon high ground, just in case some Hydras show up or some Lings show up. Scourge flying right into that cannon, which they know is there. Dude, come on, careful. Careful, but sees about three Corsairs out, says, yeah, that's going to be going to be more Corsairs than just a couple today, isn't it? Shuttle speed coming in. Reavers on the way through that robotics facility. Three base versus two base. And this is, I think, the first time that this has been a three base with gas scenario. I guess since game two. A three base with gas scenario here for Larva. No, nope. one Scourge connection is good, fine. One Scourge connection out of two is probably better than average. <laughs> so Rain's going to be fine with that one. Mm. Again, at certain angles... Oh, jeez. Oh, gosh. Okay. All right. Well, uh... Scourge count, not happy. Certain angles, the Corsairs are about the same speed as the Scourge, and sometimes the Scourge are faster. Especially turning allows the Scourge to catch up. See how that distance... Oh, gee, will occurs. What a juke that was, though. My goodness, what a move. I, how did that even happen? What? That Corsair went between three Scourge and didn't take a hit. Amazing play. That's going to go on the highlight reel. Mm, good scout there. Sees the Reaver out. Sees the Temple Archives. Saw that was warping in. No sign of a third base. Zergling makes sure of that. And a fourth base is... Okay. Fourth base from Larva. A little bit risky. And he's going for the Mutas again. Okay, Larva. I don't know. There have been games of yours that I've cast where it hasn't gone well against Corsairs with plus one attack. And... But today you've been all right. Today you've been okay. So, having some faith here, I guess, as a Larva fan. Yeah, 40, 45 workers this stage, stage of the game is fantastic. Two basing Protoss, too. Uh, so Rain's in a lot of trouble. Again, he's not dead if he loses this, because Larva needs to win four ga or five games and not four. He's only got three right now, so that's a lot. This is so much, so much Mutalisk and Scourge, most I've seen in a while. Although I did cast an amazing Larva versus Bisu game. Maybe it was Snow or someone. Where it was a lot of that. And DT is just, no, no. Their Sunken's up. Building the Sunken on this forward um, creep shaped like something I'm not going to get into. Faster Overlord movement on the way. And yeah, Flight of the Mutalisks. I think they're just gonna shut down this third base. Dude, rain, rain, friend. And the Corsairs are like, we got this. And the Scourge are like, do you though? Holy crikeys. It is so many 
Scourge. Oh my gosh, it is so many Scourge. Good dragging him across cannons as much as he could there. That was nice. And a couple Corsairs went down, but not all of them. And the third base wasn't actually canceled. I really feel like the Mutus could have stayed behind and maybe forced to cancel on this third. Guess there was an Archon in the neighborhood, though. That's never great. Look at them just dancing around this Archon. Yeah, this Archon getting kills, too. Oh. <laughs> It's only four. It's only four of us. Leave us alone. Fourth base gonna warp in under extreme fire. Storm getting researched. Eleven Hydras on the way. Mutos are like me. By ourselves, could we take down that Archon? Nah, probably not. Ooh, another Corsair down. If this Hydra Ball can show up before Storm is done, I feel like Rain might just be dead here. But he seems to just be kind of hanging out. I don't know what for. What are you waiting for? Missile attack level two? One is finished. Let's go. I feel like if every one of these Hydras was here, or maybe... Here and then here, a lot of area, a lot of attack space. What are you waiting for? This is very strange. He's just trying to win this thing with his mutas and his scourge, but that's not happening. Ooh. I think another Corsair died and another hit happened, but the Corsair didn't go down. DT scouting around this right side of the map, seeing what he can find. Nothing to find, but no group of Hydras and an Overlord protecting this fourth base. All right, so the Hydras are moving, but Storm's done. I guess there were a couple Reavers that maybe Larva was worried about. I don't know. Taking fifth base. So yeah, he's getting this whole bottom half of the base vision that I saw for him later than maybe I wanted it to be. Yeah, man, quick plug again for RJB. I'm serious. Without him, this channel would be, like, at least 40% not as cool. Uh, YouTube.com slash at RJB underscore TV. I'd be waiting for lurkers, but there's reavers out. I'm not sure that lurkers are the answer to anything here. Quick pause, says Larva. Rain apologizes for that. Maybe there's some lag that we can't experience, and Rain is apologizing for that, and Larva wanted to pause to see if it would clear up. That happens in StarCraft sometimes. 166 to 151 supply. Worker count's about even at 54 to 52. In favor of the Protoss on both counts. Muta's picking off High Templar. That's exactly what we talked about today more than once. That's a lot of Zealots, though. Like, I don't know if the Hiders want to engage with this even without the High Templar in that ball of... Protoss, you know? Donating some Mutalisks to the cause, as you do. Hydra's coming. Great angle here. Great concave, and Rain's like, nope. Let's not go in there. Let's just kind of head down south. Let me try to threaten some of these bases. Force the Zerg player to engage into us. Ooh, but free High Templar, though. What are you doing here? Okay. Dying is what he's doing here. And yeah, see? The Hiders want a narrow position if there's Zealots attacking them, but the Dragoons, they want more of a concave. Because range. You know how this works. You understand the math. Great storms. Lurker spines coming in on everything. Dragoons trying to clear those suckers out. There's a lot of Protoss right side. This center group of Lurkers not doing particularly well. And suddenly it's 165 to 134 supply. Protoss is up. Reaver getting some shots off. Lurker's dying. Defiler Mound is only 50% complete. That's not going to be a big play here. Not anytime soon. So now Rain has the window to win this game. That's a lot of Lurkers. <laughs> that is a lot of Lurks. Lings come cruising on in. No, no, and no. Reaver. 
Oh, Reaver goes down. Terrible pickup, but I guess there was a Scourge here anyway. Maybe he thought it was going to die regardless. Uh, lurker, Lurker, Lurker down. Remember when there were like a ton of Lurkers here? Now there are no Lurkers remaining, and it's 130 to 100 supply, and Lings and Hydras are desperately trying to get a surround on this army as it marches in. But reinforcing units from Rain are coming from across the map. I don't know. Rain wants a pause right there? Again, Larva apologizes, and Larva holds on. He wipes out the entire group, so the reinforcements aren't as happy to join that party as they otherwise would be because all their friends are dead now. Uh, good Storm. High Templar are getting sniped for it, but Storm's going down. Rain again with a PP in the middle of a battle. Does that not mean pause? Does that mean you're lagging, dude? Stop it. You're killing me, Smalls. Maybe that's what he's saying. Consumes on the way. Zealot's getting into this third base. There's a sunken and a handful of wings. They are adrenalings. With all of no attack upgrades and one armor. So not as good as they'd want to be here. No, no. And the zealots are like, well, if the lings aren't going to engage, I guess we'll kill some drones. Even supply. Not great for the Protoss player to be on even supply right now. And even worker count, too. Fine. A couple drones died. Nothing too big. Trying to bust in here is a little bit tough. There's a Nothling Hider down here to make these Zealots think twice about it, even with High Templar support. So, yeah. This is a good game. This is like game two. This is just back and forth. Battles all over the place. Macro hatches coming up left and right. Protoss player considering a fourth base down here, maybe. Maybe over here. Again, Rain just apologizing non-stop. I don't know what that's all about. DK. Donkey Kong. I don't know the DK rap very well. I was not a kid that had a Nintendo 64 growing up. All right. Zealots. Reavers. Gah, big hit. Archon spawn the follow-up here. Not that great against the Hydras, but... Getting surrounded also bad, but pretty good against the Lings here, especially with the plus two attack. 36 damage splash. Reaver gets all the way up in here to the fourth base of our third player Larva. Gets some nice hits, some beautiful micro here. Wow, great shuttle micro with that Reaver. This army still alive. This base in a lot of trouble. Oh, Scourge wipe out the shuttle, and now the Reaver is dead. But can it help take down the Satchery first? Absolutely yes. Wait, no, keep firing. What happened? Oh, no. Another Zealot Archon attack here into the third base. Ton of Lurkers trying to get in here, but kind of the Sim City's messing with them. They finally just burrow where they are and call it a day. They're not actually defending these drones from up here, which is bad, and storms are wiping them out anyway. Very close game right now. Again, not great for the Protoss, but he's doing some damage to the economy. Or trying to do some damage to the economy here. Is there enough? Protoss, I just think Larva is continuing to flood units in here. Yeah, are Ling's dying? Absolutely. And that's it. Rain GG's. He recognizes if he can't wipe out one of these bases, he's done for. He's like economically toast. Rain taps out and Larva goes up four to two in this best of nine. Yeah, that's just kind of Larva's thing, right? Ton of macro hatches, defending bases just barely, and then just kind of desperation fire, like, I don't know, four alarm fire, five alarm fire. What is the alarm? I don't know what that scale is. But you know what I mean. Just a desperation throw units at the attack and hope it's enough to shut it down. It's never like a giant army for the Zerg shows up and then the Protoss dies. It's just a couple Hydras, few Lings here and there. Is there enough to stop this? No, send more Hydras and Lings, I guess, and I hope it sure works. And his macro is so good and he can make so many units at once thanks to his, again, attention to macro hatches all over the place. He can make a ton of units, 13 Hydras at the same time, right? 13 Hydras at the same time. Sprinkle in some drones in there too, just to make sure his economy is good. And he holds on, and he's up, he's up big time here. Let's see if Rain can make a comeback. Not looking great for the Protoss though. He does uh, Larva, 146,000 points to 138. 
outproducing by a five to two ratio there larva did the kill death ratio was less than a two to one which is not this right here is a win for the zerg player just delay 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 engage uh, storm dodge expand a bunch defend those bases as well as you can and eventually you can get a win Boof! That was awesome. Okay, okay. So, we could have a few games left over. We could have maybe, like, one or more. Don't know. We'll have to see how many more games there are. But hit that like button if you haven't already. And why isn't StarCraft great? Game 7, Ground Zero. Zerg top right. Protoss bottom left. Hmm. So, Rain came close to killing that fourth base of Larva. And if he had done that, I feel like that would have played out differently, right? Man, that Reaver, why didn't you fire? I think he was out of Scarabs, or maybe he glitched? If Reavers didn't glitch, they would be super duper overpowered, right? So, glitching is part of the game. What's your favorite sound of workers mining, Zerg? Or is it Protoss? I think mine's Protoss. I really do. Again. Pylon. Worker probe. Scouting out. Looks like it's going to be... I'm going to guess a hatch first on this map for right now. It doesn't have to be. Definitely could be from our guy. Yeah. Larva keeping at it. Going to go for the hatch first play. Probe Scouts does not find any Zerg top left. Not happy about that. Has to make a decision in ignorance of what to do. So you go safe. You go forge. How it works. And this is where Rain says, Dang it, I could have gone Nexus first. <laughs> oh, well. Giant four-player map. You win some, you lose some on that opener, don't you? End of the fog of war goes the Kakaru. Taking with him the mysteries of secrets unknown to us humans. Yeah, no reason for a cannon against a hatch first. Not yet. Not before a gate, anyway. Timeless. The music is just timeless. Nintendo's got a lot of the same things going, man. Some of their music from the 80s and 90s, some of their video game music is just gorgeous. Stands up. Third base. About three minutes again from Larva. Like the Hyrule Field theme in Zelda, they incorporate it into every Zelda game they make. And I mean... It's from like 88, 87. I mean, it's. It was something built 8 bit. It's just great. It's just great composition. And that's what this is, too, man. I think more people know the Hyrule Field theme from Zelda. Then no Protoss track one. 
from StarCraft, but you know what? It's their loss. This is good stuff. Lair finishing. Stargate on the way. On the way, on the way, on the way, on the way. Handful of lings out, but droning behind it with the spire coming in. Ooh, plus one ground weapons this time from Rain. Not going for the uh, air weapon upgrade. I mean, not right now. He definitely could because he has the cyber core, but this tells me we're going to go more for a ground focused attack early rather than the Corsairs. Which feels dangerous because, by golly, Larva has been in a love affair with Mutalisks this series, hasn't he? He's been so heavy on the Mutas. More than average, I would say, for a ZVP. And you know what? He's won. He's won by going Mutalisks against Corsairs. So maybe this is Rain being like, I'm going to make a couple Corsairs, maybe just the one. Right? For scouting, for hunting overlords, for making the Zerg player think that there are Corsairs out there and having to deal with it. And then we'll just work on a lot of Zealots and Dragoons and... Get Zealot legs up and maybe try to win this thing on the ground rather than in the skies. Because Larva's been very good in the skies. Macro hatch up at the third base for him. Macro hatch up at the second base for him. Close enough to that overlord to kiss it. 42 hits later, the Overlord is alive. Man, that wasn't even 42 hits later, was it? No. Corsair's like, any Overlords at the third base? No? Cool. Great. In fact, Zealot legs. Three Zealots at a time under production. Another Corsair on the way. Because he's like, I might lose this one. <laughs> These larvae are waiting for the Corsair to cut this way, cut back to home, and then kill it. Look at this. Look at this. Oh my gosh, the positioning. That's so good from Larva. And Range is like, no! You will not catch me in a trap. Not like that. Not today. Temple Archives on the way. Couple Corsair exists. Three. Okay, fine. There's four. This one died. This one might have just died. Three. Yeah, zealot count big. This is what these links are for. How many zealots are there? Where are they going? What upgrades do they have? This is all information these links are trying to gather here. Plus one attack just came in on those side blades. So they're ready to rock. This Sunken will be ready for this battle. I don't know if Lings and Hydras and Sunken to do this. The Sim City, good. And here we go, engaging in those Zealots, trying to kill as many of these Lings as they can. The plus one attack allows them to do that very, very easily. And getting around the backside here. Dude, that Sunken taking hits. Holy crap, is this just a traditional little plus one Zealot timing attack at the third base? Mind you, which Larva's defended probably 18,000 times in his career, and yet he wasn't ready for it. The Hydra Den's going to get sniped. Thank, thank you for your time, Hydra Den. There's no mining going on at the third base here whatsoever. Drones are trying to maybe tank a little bit for these Hydras, but by golly. I mean, we've seen that. We've seen that on the channel a bunch of times. Really effective speed lot plus one timing attack on the third base of a Zerg player. They don't have any lurkers. They only have one sunken. Things go bad, but again, Larva just scrapping enough defense to keep the base alive. He lost a Hydroden. He lost a sunken. Yes, he lost a couple drones. Fine, he's alive. And that's what matters here. Hey, look who's making mutos. <laughs> Dude, the Corsair ball is a little bit heavier, maybe. A little bit heavier than you want it to be. Overlord snipe, supply block on larva. Mm -hmm. I 
I'm holding my tongue. I would be mad at these, but, you know, it's larva. It's fine. It's fine. Storm's on the way. Not killing this third base kind of sucks. Hey, Spore is actually out to try to save these over... No, two overlords die. Supply blocking larva. Fuller, another... Ooh. Another overlord dies. <laughs> he had an overlord popping that was going to get him out of supply block, and then another overlord went down, and that was over. That dream was done. Fourth base coming up, top left. Muta's trying to harass here. That probe line has no cannon protection at all. That's terrible. Ooh, good storm, though. Oh, my... No! What? What? No! <laughs> no! <laughs> Larv, <laughs> what happened? What happened, mi amigo? What? 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 He just lost like six mutas for nothing. Seven mutas, possibly, considering that High Templar has seven kills. <laughs> Oh, also there's a DT in here? No, this DT is not getting... Wait, what? Is this T getting work done? Hold your horses, please. <laughs> DT. There's a spore, and there are a ton of hydras here. Okay, well maybe part of it. He was worried about this DT, so he didn't worry about his... He wasn't paying attention to his mutas. And then this DT gets in here and there's just nothing. There's nothing to save these drones either. Okay, so that's part two. So the DT distracts him so his mutas die. And then he doesn't even take care of the DT. And the DT has free reign to wipe out every drone inside his main base. Look, again, not a great position. But a position you could have continued to play through there. But whatevs. You guys know better than I do. 30,000 points to 40,000 points pro toss up. Uh, 46 Zerg units killed. Seven of them were mutas at the end of the game there. Structures raised 2 to 0. We got ourselves 147,000 resources spent from rain. 125,000 spent from larva. So pro toss out spending our Zerg in 10 minutes and winning. I mean, that storm was amazing, and that DT was amazing. And sometimes that's all you need. All right, cool. So our guy Rain has clawed his way back to a 4-3 position here. It's still only one game that Larva needs to win this thing, but I don't know. How much longer will it go? Round and round. Round and round it goes. Let's find out who comes out on top. We are back on ground zero. Top right again, Zerg player, bottom left, Protoss. Rain is on the back foot. Larva only needs one more game to win, to win the best of nine. And Rain needs two. So winning two games straight against Larva is a tall order. But there is Psionic Storm. Which Larva kind of makes look useless sometimes. Just because of how many units he has, but... Uh. Hoorah. Hey, hey. Hoorah, hey, hey. This probe has a lot of important work to do. This probe is going to throw down a pylon and then go on a scouting journey of self-discovery. Just kidding. Who needs to scout? What the heck, Rain? <laughs> Rain says, screw you, Falcon. That's not what I'm doing at all. Maybe that means he has... Is he like one base DT rushing or something? Dude, that would be interesting. That would be intriguing. It is a gate opening, so not defensive. He's got plans on his mind. And Larva is gonna go a hatch first. Yep, based on how much money he's gotten. What his supply is. Hatch first. Okay. 
So to hatch first versus what appears to be a more aggressive opening from Rain than we've seen in a while here. Oh, maybe a two gate. Nobody expects a two gate. No one expects the Spanish Inquisition. Drone goes scouting out because Probe hasn't showed up yet, but Probe does show up, so Drone's like, mm, do I still need to scout? Yes. Yes, you do. You'll notice a lack of an expansion back here from Rain. What is he doing? He's making zealots first. But he's not making a cyber core. Oh, he needs a gas. Okay. So he's making zealots and delaying his expansion. I don't know. Can you win with this? Okay, finally the expansion comes in, but man, this zealot count, another one's on the way. This is almost kind of Bisu-esque, where you send zealots at the Zerg player until they die. But also there's an expansion behind it, so I don't know. It's not quite that assertive here. Couple lings popping out, probe dies, drones getting shots off. Yeah, that's what we're here for. And the zealot behind the mineral line is super annoying to deal with. All right, well, it was a little bit different here from Rain. Third base, three minutes. Look at this guy hiding behind the extractor. Gas income has begun from rain. All right, so what is the play here? Hydrodon, fine. The Lings don't want to move out because the Zealot pressure makes them worry that if they move out, they'll miss a Zealot slipping in the backside and getting some more damage off. So they are actually on defense. Whereas the Overlord has to come over here and see what's up to, you know, see if any Zealots are coming across the map there too. Fine, super fine stuff. Forge on the way. Stargate coming in, Hydra speed, which indicates we're going to see some aggression out of these Hydras that are made not defense. Speed means you want to get across the map quickly with those Hydras. Start putting some pressure on this front door of the Protoss. So this could be some kind of a three base Hydra style maneuver here, which again, Arena should be insanely familiar with. But yeah, Hydro production has begun. Muscular Augment's about complete here, too. That upgrade doesn't take too long. But no Metabolic Boost. So just really getting that speed upgrade to Hydra as quickly tells me this is going to be Hydra Pressure. Whether it's dedicated, you know, full-time Hydra Pressure to win the game, or if it's a little bit of Hydra Pressure droning up behind it, we'll have to see. As it is drones and Hydra's a mixture of the both under production here. Save the Overlord! No! Couldn't save the Overlord. No, Lings aren't going to get the Dragoon either. Oh, maybe they will. The Dragoon. All right. Yep, they're going to get the Dragoon. So, oh, my gosh. Not getting the Dragoon. Getting the Dragoon, but killing like eight Lings for it. That's fair. Good trade for Rain. Yeah, drone, drone, drone. Drone, drone. Mixture. Mixture of Hydra Pressure and droning. Okay. So not an all-in here for pretty early stuff. Gateway sniped. Cybercore might go down next, actually. Dude, this sucks. This so sucks for Rain. Corsair's like, must find overlords, must validate my existence. Oh, there's Hydra's, right. That makes sense. Oh, Cybercore dying is terrible. No upgrades, no more Dragoons can be produced here either. Just Zealots, although in fairness, you just want Zealots against these guys anyway. Did you get a, yeah, got a Citadel up before that died, so that's nice.
And a uh, supply block on rain. Okay, I mean, both players are supply blocked. Thanks to the power of... I don't know. That Corsair didn't kill an Overlord. I don't know how Larva is supply blocked other than just forgetting an Overlord, which totally sucks. But hey, it happens to the best of us. Macro hatch, macro hatch. Going into a bit of a longer game here, right? Four cannons and four zealots against six hiders. The six hiders are not going to have a good time with that. If I think if he'd pushed, I think if he had maybe just made another round of ten hiders or so, he could have maybe busted this and won the game. But he's playing a little more economically focused, a little bit safer. He's been okay in late game today against Rain. Although that game too, Laura almost lost that. So I don't know how comfortable he feels about late game against Rain today. Zealots got their speed upgrade. <laughs> how do you know? Because they went out and chased the Hydras away off the front porch. That's how you know. <laughs> DTs, DTs. We're a big part of Rain getting that win in game number seven. No sunkens at this base? Are you joshing me, sir? Is this in jest? What? You... Okay. It's like he knows the Zealots are out. They have speed. They've got plus one. All right. I guess they got rebuffed thanks to a drone pull combined with those Hydras. Sure. I still think that third base should have taken a lot more damage. A lot of Hydras. Fine. That's the thing. Zealots trade well, but anything being super outnumbered by the thing they're supposed to counter is not going to go well for them. Protoss working on further ground attack upgrades. Working on the Psionic Storm too. Ooh. Ooh hoo hoo. We got a Dark Archon up. I mean, that's got to be Maelstrom, right? Although he's not researching it. So I don't know what this guy is for exactly. Feedback on the filers. It's a little bit early for that. It's got to be a Maelstrom attempt on these Hydras, of which there are many, and they are a good target for Maelstrom, too. Hydras still don't have any attack upgrades, but they are in numbers to where they feel pretty comfortable pushing in. Fourth base, 12 o'clock-ish. For our guy Larva, there it is. Maelstrom on the way at nine minutes. Now the question is, will there be a good Maelstrom achieved by Rain? Dunno, guess we'll find out. Lurker Aspect coming in. Hydra count big. No overlords with this group, and we know DTs are a potential here. The two DTs that remain turned themselves into a Dark Archon, so no Invisible Man threat anymore. But I'm really surprised he showed up there without any overlords at all. Scourge up. Maybe at this point to snipe down OBS that might exist. Hydras do have their plus one attack now, so it's a bit of a plus one attack timing. And they're like, if you want to fight away from the cannons, maybe? I don't know. Hydra's still waiting for reinforcements to come in. Big drone transfer up to this fourth base. Four bases to two, not where you want to be. Friends. You really don't want to be down four bases to two against a larva. Maybe against lesser Zerg players, you can get away with it, but not now. Skirt seeing that Dark Archon and being like, interesting. Interesting. Storm. First storm of the day. Chasing away those Hydralisks. Hydras say, I don't know if we like this. There's Storm. There's Speed Lots. There's a Maelstrom that could get tossed down on us at any second. Not feeling good at all. Queen's Nest. Let's see another hive here in this series. Haven't seen a lot of them. Haven't seen a lot of hives. That's okay. Don't have to be seeing hives for them to uh, for it to be a good StarCraft game, right?
Ooh, bad Corsair control there, but not really a big part of Rain's game in this match. He's not going for the Corsairs. He's got the Zealots, got the Dragoons, got the High Templar, got the Dark Archon. So mixing it up. Good man. Very impressed by this. Plus two Dragoons do pretty well against, well, most everything. But Overlords are on that list of every... Oh, he could have stayed alive. Oh, he stayed alive by running. Hey, running away. Valid stuff. Third base warping in left side from our Protoss player. Rain. Uh, sunken colony at the fourth in case some zealots wander their way up there. And I'm assuming once the high... There you go. Hive gets started. Wait. Was it further along? Is that a glitch? Nope. Okay. Live. Hive. Hive not all that far along. But Adrenal it seems to be what Larva is favoring. Even before getting the Defiler Mound on that Hive completion today. Oh, is this going to base race? Are we going to trade a base here, guys? Both of you are in opposite sides of the map, and you don't know where the other army is. So look at you, both kind of pulling back, being like, uh, is the army attacking me? Oh, it is! It's up here towards this base. Okay, so this is the Absurd Army says, Ooh, everybody up this way. Wait, hold on. Rain is pulling back. What is this dance? What are we doing here today? We are dancing, of course. But of course. Males. No! Dark Archon target fired and killed before Maelstrom could get out. Boo! Boo on Larva. I wanted a Maelstrom. Overlord there at the third base. Scouts it exists and dies and by dying supply blocked Larva. That's not exactly what you want to be seeing. Metabolic boost coming in at 13 minutes. Hive done. Oh my gosh. Metabolic boost has to finish before Adrenal can start. That's funny. Okay, here comes Rain. Got plus two attack. The Hiders also have plus two attack. These zealots just want to die. Hey, guys. Defiler actually getting Defiler mound out before Adrenal. Interesting. I wonder if that's a problem for Larva. I wonder if he was fully intent. He could get Adrenal right now. He's not, though, which I find curious. There we go. Adrenal getting started. Let's go. Let's go. Larva kind of splitting his attention in between defending his bases. And this is a pretty strong attack onto the third base of Rain. And the army comes back in to help deal with this too. Larva decides to kind of stick around for a minute. While maybe Zerg comes up on the other side. God, this red blends into this lava really well, doesn't it? Beautiful concave. An absolutely beautiful concave. Great storms here from Rain too, though. The, the hiders are stutter stepping forward, which is usually a sign of a Zerg player that feels pretty confident in their own ability to win a battle, even without Adrenal Wing, which is kind of nuts. Dude, these High Templar are alone. Alone in the universe. At least the Lings have speed now. Oh, High Templar down. High Templar down. And this guy is saved by the Zealots, saving his bacon. Fourth base warping in. Actually, done warped in down south here. So, Rain's on four bases and Larva's on four bases. Looks like maybe checking for a fifth base summer home here is Larva. But he's up 133 to 98 supply, which is kind of where you want to be. And it's okay. It's not ideal. Good snipe on that OBS, but those lurkers are dead anyway. Good attempt. An attempt was made. Ling Hydra jumping on a group of Dragoons. Dude, 137 to 110 supply is not good. Mutas. Hey, look. Oh, my gosh. It's 11 Mutalisks. Dude, Larva. Larva loves them so much. Dorina Lings against Archons. Not great. The hold at this third base is legendary. The fourth base. Mm, I was going to say kill the pylon, but there's two pylons. Too smart by rain, but does it matter when there are adrenalings and mutas on top of your base and all your probes are dying and the Archon tries to come back, but the Hydras wipe that guy out. Probes getting... Oh my gosh. Probes almost walking through that storm. 
Ahlings. Uh, Plus one attack. Adrenal. Uh -uh. Rain getting squished all of a sudden. This fourth base is in a lot of trouble. And that's it. Rain taps out and Larva. Through incredible use of Mutalisks throughout this best of nine series. Ends up winning it five games to three. An eight game series between Rain and Larva today. Hit that like button, man. Even if you've never hit the like button in your entire life, do it today. Subscribe as well. Uh, this is the kind of stuff you're going to get on this channel. I mean, this is a little bit out of the ordinary, to be fair. I'm not casting best of nines every day, but this kind of stuff shows up and is awesome and is super fun. And I, I am just, oh, thanks again, RJB, for the replays. Thanks to Larva and Rain for playing this out. And yeah, surprise Mutaflock, what up? <laughs> Larva loves his Mutalisks against Protoss, and he's gotten good results with them too. 1-1 one, one Adrenalings, just trying to win it against these uh, Zealots, and I think I had plus two or plus three by now. But yeah, that's fourth base dying against a four basing Larva, where you're down about 130 to 80. Ah, <sighs> fantastic. Like, really, 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 really fun stuff here today. Just good back and forth. Oh, a fifth base coming up bottom right from Larva 2, and a sixth, by the way. Yeah, double expanding behind all of this. Rain tapping out makes a lot of sense. So just great back and forth. Some early aggression stuff, some getting into Defiler stuff. High Templar consistent throughout this entire series. Ling floods and DTs and... Muta's getting stormed to death, and what a great, great fun series that was. I hope you had fun with it, too. 98,000 points for Rain, 101,000 for a Larva, outproducing the Protoss player by a 2 to 1 ratio, a little bit more than that. Kill death ratio, not quite close to that for Rain. That's your problem there, and yeah, outspending the Protoss by only about 1,000 resources, but it was only about 16 minutes. It's fine. Everything is all right. So GG. Well done, Larva. Getting the win in this best of nine incredibly fun series featuring many different strategies and two players who are amazing. Truly, truly amazing stuff. So absolutely a great blast casting this for you today. I had a ton of fun with it. StarCraft is honestly my favorite thing, and I hope it is yours too. So that's going to be it for me today. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.